Uh, our operations are continuing. I'm pleased to report that our our uh, crews have successfully now secured the segment of the crane or the portion of the crane that is adjacent to and on top of the building. So we've been able to anchor that uh, and protect that piece. It, of course, is still connected to the crane. It didn't break right off. So we've secured that section. Uh, plans are now underway with respect to securing the remainder of the crane. The operator is is uh, not injured. Uh, made She made her way down uh, with the assistance of one of, uh, one of her colleagues and was down upon her arrival. So that's good news. No injuries to report here today and uh, we'll do our best to keep it that way. The, the challenge right now with this crane is, is, is actually the counterweights that are on the opposite side of the crane. So our crews have to, have to protect for, and this is the reason for the large, uh, the large collapse perimeter. Because of the, the tons of counterweight that's hanging off the other end of the crane, we have to protect for the fact that in the event that the crane fails further, physics will take over and that crane will move as a result of the counterweight. So that's what we're protecting for. Uh, crews, as always, have done a fantastic job. We have our high angle and uh, tech rescue crews here. No injuries reported on scene. That's, of course, our primary goal. And uh, I know that uh, I know that we're causing a lot of commuter and a lot of traffic uh, situation and pedestrian chaos here. Uh, I apologize for that. I thank everyone for their cooperation. We do have a large area protected off, and that is a precautionary means to make sure that in the event that something else happens with the crane, that no one's going to get hurt. It's not uncommon when we get these types of these types of situations. People see it happen. There's a lot of conflicting information on the initial 911 calls. Um, so, you know, I can appreciate that. It's it's actually fairly common for us. But uh, the initial arriving crews and the initial arriving incident commanders, the first thing that they will assess is the need for rescue and the life safety risk. So, they were very quickly able to determine with the supervisory staff on scene, everyone's accounted for. No injuries that needed to be adult, needed to be dealt with. We just need to deal with the public safety hazard, given the fact that the crane's just over, I'm told, just over 200 feet in the air, and um, we need to secure that and make sure that there doesn't end up with a subsequent incident. In the event that that happens, obviously we can't control necessarily. I can't necessarily prevent a further, you know, movement or failure of the crane at this point. But we're taking every precaution we can to make sure that it's secured. And in the event that it moves or even was to come down, hence the collapse perimeter. So. We're well in hand.